Hi, Shalom Chaverim. Have you ever gone on a carousel? It's a, a lovely ride. Children seem to enjoy it, but um, I have to tell you, it seems that many adults enjoy it as much as the children. They go around and around and around and around. And then every once in a while they say, maybe I should go off. But though it might be going very gently and slowly, it's an art to walk off a moving platform onto something stationary. And people that have tried it have not always tried it successfully. Some of them have gotten hurt. Because friends, when you're moving, it's very hard to suddenly stop. What you need is a gradual slowing down and a stop. And then you could direct and reverse direction. Dr. Dvorsky tells a story of in the days of old when there were still horse-drawn um, wagons that there was a coachman and he waited by the train depot and out comes a businessman carrying two valises, puts it on the wagon and he says to the coachman, I'm going to this and this village, do you know the way? The man turns around and says, of course I know the way, I'm, I'm from this place. I know the roads like the back of my, of my hands. Just sit back and relax. So the businessman is in the back, we trying to relax. And as he's uh, looking um, at the road and enjoying the scenery, he notices that there's going to be a turnoff. So he says, coachman, um, please make sure you stay to, on the roads that you know well. I don't want to get into a rut, and I certainly don't want to have to schlep the wagon out of a hole. Don't worry. I've been from these parts. I've been driving the roads for 40 years. Just relax. Anyway, the wagon goes off the main road, and they're on this rickety road, and now it's not very comfortable, so the coachman is looking, and it seems to him that it's getting from bad to worse, and there's actually some type of a indention in the road ahead, some type of a rut. And he says, coachman, coachman, it seems to me that there's something in the front that might be considered an obstacle. He says, didn't I tell you, I, I know this place like the back of my hands. I've been driving this road for, for 40 years. Just relax. And at just about when he finishes saying that, sure enough, the coach goes into the rut. The man falls out of the coach, hits himself, and is very, very irate. Looks at the coachman and he says, Coachman, I warned you and I warned you and I warned you, and you keep on telling me you know this place like the back of your hands. You've been driving it for 40 years. What's wrong with you? He says, nothing wrong with me. I just can't figure out. 40 years, it's, it never fails. I keep on falling into the same hole. Now, obviously, it's, it's not f as funny as it might be because we're that coachman. Many of us know exactly where we're heading, and we know exactly the pitfalls, and we know exactly the arguments. We know our wife will say this, and we will respond that way. We know that our neighbor will say this, and we will respond that way, and that will escalate into this and to that. And this has been going on for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And someone says, why do you have to keep on following the same pattern? And there's really no good answer other than it's hard to get off a moving platform. The mystics actually give us an insight into how does a person change. And they pose the following question. If we accept the premise that man was created to be productive, why is it that approximately a third of his life is spent sleeping? Where's the productivity? And they give a wonderful insight. They explain that when a person starts the day, he's starting a, a platform that's moving. And essentially, if there's something that happens that he should not have done, it is incredibly difficult to stop it. Because after all, he's in the middle of the day, he blew it, and now he has to deal with, with the results, and he has to respond, and, and there's damage control. When does he get a chance to change it? He can't. He's, put, he's running around putting out fires. So God gave us a gift. And the gift is called sleep. You go to sleep, and the day has ended. And you're off the moving platform. When you wake up in the morning, literally you are refreshed. Literally you are a new person. 
and you don't have to repeat the mistakes of yesterday. That's not only the gift of, uh, of sleep, but it's also the responsibility of sleep. To wake up refreshed and renewed to make today different than yesterday. If today is going to be a repeat of yesterday, don't go to bed. Just stay up and continue. But if you're going to, to take that break, this is the opportunity to stop, reflect, and then renew and change. In America, there's much talk about sleep deprivation. Perhaps that is why we keep on falling into the same rut. Maybe a good night's sleep is more than just physically uh, beneficial. Perhaps it's spiritually beneficial. And though it seems to be a bit of a paradox, how can you get benefit from inaction? It's not really an inaction. It's, in a sense, a, a, a moment, uh, it's a pause in order to, to start something that's actually brand new. Let's go back to our usual, we know what will be. Let's say I told you a person who wakes up and leaves the house at nine o'clock and is stuck in traffic. By the time he gets, he gets to his work, he's upset, he's frustrated, he's hot, he's uncomfortable, comes in as a bad mood, overlooks simple courtesy of hello, how are you, no smiles. Essentially, he comes in already programmed that the rest of the day is going to follow that. Now, this is going on already for seven years. And, so, and someone says, why don't you just leave 15 minutes earlier? You know the problem, right? You know, you know that you're stuck in traffic. You know by the time you get there, this is, and this is going to happen. You're already behind the time. So why do you keep on for 40 years? You know the back of the road is like the back of your hand. You keep falling into the same hole. Change it. Leave 15 minutes earlier. Leave 15 minutes later. <laughs> they say about a fellow who complained every day about his sandwiches. And he says to his friend, every single day, it's tuna fish. Every day, tuna fish. Every day, tuna fish. And finally, the guy says, so why don't you ask your wife to make peanut butter? He says, I can't. Why not? He says, I make my own, my, my own sandwich. So he makes, he creates the problem, perpetuates the problems, and then complains about the problem, change the menu. So friends, usually the rabbi tells you, wake up. I'm telling you, go to bed. <laughs> Sleep well. Get off the moving platform for a couple of hours and know the gift that Hashem has given us of a new day, a present, which we can make something magnificent. I wish you well. Sleep well and live well. Shalom.